So in the last two videos, I gave uh, essentially a high-level overview of botnets and then gave some applications of them. And what I do in this video is I'd like to continue uh, talk about botnets in some more detail and give you some additional applications of botnets, like why do bot masters actually care about setting these things up. Uh, so the first uh, application I'd like to talk about beyond the ones I've already mentioned uh, is click fraud. Click fraud. Uh, now what is click fraud? Well, um, click fraud occurs, um, so in a click fraud attack, the, the software on the botnet will basically surreptitiously click or simulate clicks on banner ads. Imagine you've got, uh, again, let, let's, let's kind of draw our botnet scenario up here. You've got a, some kind of a command and control server and a bunch of machines that have been compromised that are running a piece of malware on them that, that is basically, uh, that is being used to communicate with the command and control server and uh, where the command and control, control server in turn is being controlled by a, a uh, bot master. So let's kind of draw the bot master out. I'm going to kind of draw with horns this time. Okay, now the bot master is controlling these systems via the command and control server. So in a click fart attack, what will happen is that the software, the malware itself, will click on banner ads on websites. Now, let me explain why this actually matters. So when you look at a typical scenario, uh, and the way that banner advertisements work on the web is you might have uh, you might have a website here okay and this website um, let's say it's operated by some affiliate okay and the affiliate can in turn have advertisements hosted on their website okay and these advertisements might actually belong might be paid for by an advertiser Um, and there's a lot, there's, there's a whole kind of ad networking between here that might deal with all the mechanics of getting the advertisers advertisements on the affiliate's website, but we're going to ignore that for now. But typically what happens is if a legitimate user clicks on an advertisement, then the advertiser in turn ends up paying the affiliate a fee, kind of a, 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 a finder's fee, if you will, for the traffic that's been directed to his site as a result of somebody clicking on the advertisement. Okay, so the affiliate makes money by having people click on the advertisements. Now, what a bot master can do or what a, what a non-line cyber criminal can do is they can rent out a botnet and have that botnet simulate clicks to those ads. So this, in this case, the, the members of the botnet, the nodes that are infected, will simulate clicks to those ads. Those clicks will in turn lead to traffic to the advertiser site. Now this is obviously not legitimate traffic because these are not real people clicking on these ads. These are actually just botnets clicking on them. But the advertiser typically can't tell the difference. And so the advertiser uh, will in turn be obliged to pay money to the affiliate for those clicks. Okay. Now of course uh, the affiliate might be in cahoots with the bot master and, and of course for this type of endeavor to be successful you would need multiple systems. Uh, generating revenue, which is why people might use botnets for these cases. Now, you know, I've kind of simplified the problem. The reality is that some ad ad networks might have heuristics they can they can use to detect uh, surreptitious clicks. And there's a whole um, a whole uh, group of people who study this this problem. This, this problem is called click fraud. Uh, and there's a lot you can do in terms of being able to detect it and prevent it. But suffice it to say that if you use a botnet, uh, you do pose a danger for people who are advertising on the internet. Okay. Another typical application of a botnet, aside from click fraud, which I guess we just discussed, is uh, information stealing. And this is a very popular one. Okay, information stealing. So in information stealing, this is really with, with, as with any piece of malware, the botnet operator might try to steal information from infected systems. So uh, once these systems have become infected, uh, he'll try to siphon off very sensitive pieces of information, things like uh, passwords or um, you know credit card numbers. Maybe they, they found credit card numbers on these computers, uh, banking credentials. And these are obviously your kinds of passwords and banking credentials. Uh, and so on and so forth, the email addresses, etc. And, and what the bot master can then do, or, or the cyber criminal can then do, is take this data that they get from all of these systems and then sell that data 
via the underground economy. So maybe they'll, they'll find some buyer for that data. And typically the, the bot master might not directly use the data himself or herself, but might sell that data via the underground economy. There are always people out there who are interested in buying stolen credit card numbers and, and buying email addresses, etc. For example, if you're a spammer, uh, you might be very interested in purchasing uh, a stolen email address or, or somebody's email address because you now have one more person to whom you can send out spam. Now, uh, you know, interestingly enough, um, you know, there's so much data that's stolen in these contexts that usually you can't get a lot of money for it. So typically spam, I mean, it, you, you are getting many thousands of email addresses for, you know, a few dollars if, if you're lucky. Uh, but it is an application. And by the way, this doesn't have to be just kind of consumer information. You could also imagine that you can steal, you know, information in the context of corporate espionage. So that can also be an indication here. So, um, you know, this, this could involve maybe passwords to critical corporate systems or uh, customer data, things of that nature. And we have seen a lot of instances, especially in the last couple of years, of corporate espionage that's carried out uh, that, that starts off with somebody getting compromised via a bot of some sort. Okay, so that's another application. Okay, I'm going to stop this video right here and I'll keep going uh, in the next video and talk about some additional applications of botnets. Thanks a lot and I hope you join me for the next video.